Hey everyone, I'm going to try and explain everything I can about forms in about 8 minutes. To create a form element, we'll need a pair of form tags. There's an opening form tag and a closing form tag. And depending on the user input that you need, there is an input element. And you can set the type attribute to whatever you need. Let's say we need some text from a user like a first name. Within our form, there is a text box where we can enter in some user information. So we should probably let the user know what we want them to type in. I will precede this input element with a label. Let's say first name, and a user can type in their first name. Now it is considered good practice to fill out a for attribute within the label and set this to whatever you want. Let's say F name. And within the associated input element, I will set the ID also equal to F name, whatever's within the for attribute. This does a couple things. One, if I was to click on this label, this will select my input box. It's also helpful for people that are using screen readers so that they can easily navigate your form. There is also a name attribute. When we submit this data, what sort of name do we want to give that data? Think of it like a variable. I will also name this F name as well. Within the input element, there is a placeholder to display some default text to a user by setting the placeholder attribute equal to some text, like SpongeBob. So if I was to click within this input field and type something, that will get rid of my placeholder. Let's create an input field for a last name, and really we can just copy this and make a few changes to it. So copy both the label and the input element. Uh, let's change this from first name to last name. Change for as well to L name. ID will be L name, and let's make name L name as well. And the placeholder, how about square pants? These labels and input elements will appear on the same line. To separate them and treat them as block level elements, I will add each of these pairs to their own div element. Perhaps I'll add a line break as well. Okay, now with forms, there are built-in buttons too. We will set the input type equal to reset. So if I were to type in some text, and click reset, that will reset whatever's within my form. And there is a submit button as well. I will set the type equal to submit. So currently our data doesn't have any place to go to. So if I were to click the submit button, this data is not going to go anywhere. So if I need to send this data to a page, I will list that page within the action attribute of my opening form element. So we'll need the help of a dynamic programming language, PHP for example. Uh, we're not going to focus on functionality in this video, but rather the structure of a form. So if I need to send this to a PHP page, I will list that PHP page within the action attribute. There is also an associated method attribute. Two common values are get and post. Get is considered insecure. It's going to append your data to the URL of your web page. So for example, if I set the method to get and type in some information and click submit, it's going to append my data to the end of my URL. So it's going to add a question mark, then all of my data. If you need to submit some secure information like a password, do not use get. I would say that this is useful for things like search boxes if a user needs to navigate your web page for maybe some sort of keyword. So it's better to use post to submit some secure information. But this isn't going to do anything obviously because we do not have a server set up. Now there is a required boolean attribute you can add. If somebody needs to submit some information, they are required to fill out any input elements that have this boolean attribute of required. So if I just attempt to submit this without typing in anything, there is a small pop-up box that says, please fill out this field. All right, I'm gonna go kind of quick through these next input elements, just because I think we have the hang of the general context of input elements. So next we have password fields. You set the type equal to password. So if somebody types in some characters, they will be hidden. If you need to set a max size of your password, there is a max length attribute. Let's set this to maybe 12, so we can type in no more than 12 characters for a password. And you can also add that required Boolean attribute too. For an email element, set the type equal to email. In order to submit an email, we need an at character within our email. Otherwise, we cannot submit this information. And perhaps I'll add a placeholder as well. Placeholder equals spants at gmail.com. 
So there is our placeholder. For a telephone number, you're going to set the type equal to tell. And I do have a placeholder as well. If you need the user to type in a date, like a birth date, there is a type date, which includes an interactive calendar to select a date. A user can type in a number if you set the type equal to number. Let's say that the user is buying something from a store. There are some arrows where they can increase or decrease the quantity, but we should probably place some limits. They can type in basically whatever number they want. They want negative 1 billion items. So we can set the min and the max. I'll set the min equal to zero and the max equal to what about 99. And you can also set a default value too. I'll set the default value equal to one. Next, we have radio buttons. With radio buttons, we can only select one radio button from any one group. Perhaps we'll have the user select a title. Are they a mister, a miss, or a doctor? So I'm going to create a pair of labels and input for each option that we have. So we will have a Mr. option, Miss and PhD. Okay, I will set the input type equal to radio and then do that with each of these pairs. So we can select more than one because these are all not within the same group. To set them all within the same group, we will all have them have the same matching name. Uh, let's say that the name will be title. So therefore, we can only select one now since they're all within the same group. And that's kind of the idea behind radio buttons. You can only select one. And we will set an associated value of, let's say, Mr. for the first value, Mrs. for the second, and Doctor for the last one. Then I'm just going to precede all of these with a separate label. Uh, let's say title. And I will set the for attribute equal to title. And within each of these radio button labels, when I click on one of these labels, I also want to be able to select one of these radio buttons. So I will set the for attribute equal to a unique ID. So let's say Mr. The ID will be Mr. And repeat the same steps. Okay, so when we click on these labels, we should be able to select our radio buttons. Nice. With drop-down menus, instead of a type, we are going to use a pair of select tags. So there's an opening select tag and a closing select tag, and we list individual options within the select element. We'll give our user three options from this drop-down menu. They can pay with a Visa, a MasterCard, or a gift card. And I will give each of these a value. Okay, we now have a payment field. And the user can select an option from this drop-down menu. And the last input type I will explain in this video is the checkbox type. So let's say we have a subscribe button and you can go ahead and smash that subscribe button. So just set the type equal to checkbox for, well, a checkbox. Well, yeah, everybody, that's how to create an HTML form. There's still some more advanced input types we did not cover, but these are the very basics, I would say. If you found this video helpful, please remember to smash that like button, leave a random comment down below, and subscribe if you'd like to become a fellow bro.